Hey, and welcome to KDM English. We're so glad you're here this evening, and we're glad you're here dressed to impress because it is the start of the Easter weekend, and we are really excited to start work, spending some time with you. And tonight, I have a new host with me, the one and only Brandy Boyd, who is also my wife. How are you this evening? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You're looking quite nice this evening. Thank you. It's nice to see you out of your stretchy pants and hoodie. Yeah, hey, we're hoping everyone else joined us and dressed up, looking a little nice, give you a chance to, you know, not be in normal workout clothes or, you know, the pajamas you've been wearing for six or seven weeks in a row. Now you can actually get out of them and, and kind of change it up a little bit. So here we'll show Pastor Zibby here in a moment. He's looking super <laughs> incredible tonight. So as, as we have a prayer service for the uh, crock wolf here coming afterwards, but let me just ask you, Brandy, how has it been in quarantine life for you over the past couple of weeks? It's actually been better than I thought. If you would have told me five years ago that I was going to be stuck in the house, I think I probably would have gone crazy. But I've actually found that I actually kind of like being home. So I'm surviving you. So that's good. The dog is super happy because we're home all the time. So I'm, I'm doing good. Yeah, we have... One dog, no kids, and whenever we were on our way up here, we uh, the dog was really confused because it was like both of us were leaving at the same time. Normally, it's just one of us going to the grocery store or me coming to the church to do some work. So it's a little bit weird experience, us both driving together somewhere, and, and we actually ran into a little traffic, which was a little bit strange, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So Hey, I just saw if you're living here in the city of Krakow, that we have a couple of more. I think they've extended what we're supposed to be doing or what we have been doing for another week, but that's an encouraging because last time they extended it for like a month. So it's just hopefully, and we're praying that this is a peak, peak time and just a peak, uh, peak moment where we can start seeing things start going down. So, hey, if you're with us, if you've joined us then, and you've dressed to impress, make sure you tag us on social media just so we can... Uh, just all celebrate as we're as we're here at church together. And so I can remember the church we were at back in the U.S. Whenever we whenever we lived there, there was always these big big like photo booth places where whole families there'd be like 30 people sitting there, and you wouldn't even know these people were related, but apparently they were, and they were taking pictures and things. And so so now that's you know that looks a little bit different, but hopefully. Uh, Hopefully you're you're enjoying your time there. And so, hey, if you can just put in the chat where you're from, where you're watching from, that would be really awesome and really great. So, hey, so what is what are some things that God's been doing just kind of in your life or you've seen happening during this season where there's just complete chaos uh, in so many areas? Yeah, so something that is awesome that happened last week is I was messaging a friend and um, she is a believer, but her husband is not. And so we were talking about some things and she said, hey, can you just, you know, be praying for my husband? He's going through some anxiety. And do you know any Christian psychologists or something that, that we can reach out to? And I said, well, you know, I'll I'll see what I can find, but I'll be praying for you. And so I just typed out a, a simple prayer. It wasn't anything crazy, but Father, you know, we just declare that there would be peace, that the anxiety must leave, that they would just have peace in their home, they would have peace in their marriage. And she said, you know, thanks so much. And so the next morning I had gotten some information regarding the psychologist. And so I got back and I messaged her and she told me, she said, oh, actually, I don't need that anymore because yesterday after you sent that prayer, she said, my husband has been feeling totally fine. He's been at peace. And not only has it continued that day, but I messaged her today just to see how things were going. And she said, you wouldn't believe this, but he's been constantly talking to his friends and his family. And he hadn't done that for months. And so it's so awesome to see that we can pray for people. We don't have to be with someone, you know, two meters away from someone, of course, um, to pray for them that we can reach out because God is a powerful God and he can work miracles and do miracles even when we're not together. And we see that in scripture and it's so awesome to see that here and just to experience that and to be able to declare things over people and situations actually change because God is powerful and faithful and he's living today. So that has been so awesome just to be able to reach out to friends and just ask, you know, how they're doing and just 
uh, encourage them and just speak hope into their lives. Yeah, it's really interesting that we're in this season now where all of a sudden the church is without walls. There's just no, there's no borders. And so I was actually thinking as you were sharing that story of, there's a story in Acts where the apostles, they would have actually like handkerchiefs put on them. And I remember actually preaching a sermon that we're more than a hanky uh, a couple of years ago, but that they would put it on them and then they would take it to someone and then we would see God do something. And so even now, as we're distant, as we're far away, that we can we can actually still see God move through the TV screen, move through a text message, move through a message, and just bring breakthrough. And that to me, that's really an incredible thing, and that's really something that's really fun to to see God do. Where it's not actually about us anymore at all; it's completely about Him and what He's doing, and 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 the power that He has. Uh, so, hey, we just want to remind you tonight: we are actually going to be taking communion. So it's the, some bread, or tonight we have some crackers and some, uh, and we also have some wine, or in this case, we have grape juice. So I'd encourage you now that if you would just like to, you could just grab a couple of these items or something maybe you have around the house that can symbolize the taking of the covenant meal. So we put it earlier on social media, but just to, just to remind you that this would be a great time. So I just really want to... Tonight I'm excited because it starts, it really starts the beginning of the Easter weekend, you know, and it's, it's, it's like the start because tonight would have been what, what would happen at the Last Supper and this was kind of the beginning of everything and the, and the start of, of Jesus walk to the cross and then obviously there's, you know, his death, burial, and then his resurrection, which is what we'll celebrate on Sunday in uh, homes all around the world, which is going to be really cool. I mean, if you just think about it, you know, there are going to be millions, if not billions of homes that there's going to be a celebration. It's going to be weird. It's going to be different. So we were just talking, I was talking with Pastor Zibby and uh, Adrian, our producer back there. We were just talking earlier and it's just going to be weird. You know, this is, that's the only way to describe it. It's just going to be strange. It's going to have an interesting feel. It's just going to have an interesting feeling with, you know, not being together with people. I know in a lot of places around the world, this is one of the biggest Sundays for churches where we can just gather together and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But tonight kind of starts it. And that's, that's something that's exciting for me is that there's, you know, this, the starting of what happened. There were some significant moments that Jesus did and some really incredible and powerful moments and times. And so... What I would actually want to do is I actually want to talk about uh, an upgrade in our life, you know, and, and we've been talking all through kind of what the journey of the Israelites, you know, we've talked about Moses, we've talked about the Red Sea, we've talked about this waiting period where it's, it's almost like an off season, which the Israelites walked through 40 years in the desert. So that was a massive off season. That was a hot off season. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that I didn't have to have to endure that. Although we did live in central Texas for a while. That's pretty close to the desert without being the desert. But it's, uh, you know, tonight we're going to walk through the story of Joshua a little bit. But I was thinking back to whenever Brandy and I first met and we were engaged and we started dating that there was, <laughs> there was this time when you had not an iPhone. Do you remember that? That was pre-iPhone pre-iPhone life. Do you remember those days? I do. That was a what, long time ago. What was the name of you? What was the name of that phone? I don't even remember. It was black. I don't know. It was, Maybe it was a, a black phone. It was, it was not an iPhone. It was Maybe like, the like an X Android or A I don't or know. B or something. And hey, I'm not I'm not saying that if you have an Android that you're wrong. I'm not saying you're right either, but we'll just leave that, you know, I am we are sponsored by Apple this evening, so thank you. Uh, but you know, it was funny because in the six or seven months that before we switched to the iPhone is that we had to replace your phone with a brand new phone three or four times because... Maybe five or six. Yeah. So it was it was almost a monthly ordeal that you'd have to call in, order a new one, and then... And so it was just like a constant turnover. And, and it was, it's not that that system was necessarily bad. It was just that phone was not a good phone. And so I can remember actually at one point, I finally said, Brandy, we're going to get you an iPhone. It was one, it was like the purple or pink one, or it was one of those, you know, it's, I don't remember what those were called, the C something, but 
anyways, we got you that one. And I can remember the first two or three weeks, it was awkward. You didn't really know what was going on. And then I remember actually about a month later that there, that you're like, this is so much easier. This is so much better than the phone I used to have. It's just so much easier to deal with. And as I was thinking about this evening, you know, a lot of times in our lives, we want to see ourselves get better and we want to see some improvement. But then there's some moments where we just have to replace the old operating system and the old way of doing things and just approach life, approach the Lord in a completely different way where you're not just upgrading, but you're actually, the upgrade is a new operating system. And that's, that's when I think about the story of Joshua, that's kind of what I see and kind of the picture that I have is that there's this incredible upgrade that happens in the life of Joshua. And I, and I really love this story. So we're actually going to walk through a couple of different stories tonight really quickly because there's there's really power in in seeing what God did with with the covenant with Abraham all the way up to the last supper because it kind of it kind of they all bridge the gap and it's really a pretty amazing picture of God's faithfulness of his uh, of his continued wisdom over promises and so it's it's really a, a beautiful picture but so just, just to catch you up to speed, the Israelites, they've walked through and they've spent 40 years in the desert and then Moses dies. This has been their leader. He brought them out of Egypt and he dies. And that's whenever Joshua 1 starts. You know, there's a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. Just an, last week we talked about breaking the cycle in our lives. And can you imagine the moment? And I love the way Joshua 1 starts. So can you imagine that moment for Joshua? I mean, he had been he had been Moses's assistant. Moses is that's fun to say. Moses's assistant for for years. He had walked right alongside, but Moses was the guy. He was the leader. He was the one that was making things happen. And then all of a sudden, I love it in verse two. God tells God <laughs> tells Joshua this. He says, "Moses, my servant is dead. Now you." Now you, Joshua, you're in charge. You're going to take the people into a promised land. You're going to take the people into their inheritance. So Joshua is sitting there in that moment, and he he goes from the assistant. You know, the assistant, you have a lot of perks because you can be like around, you know, he was in the room, and he was in the tent of meeting with Moses. He was up, he went halfway up on the Mount Sinai whenever there was, you know, the uh, the commandments were given. You know, he was around. He kind of got to see the cool stuff, but he didn't have to have the responsibility of leading the people. Then all of a sudden, hey, Moses is dead. Now you're in charge and you're going to lead the people. You're going to press into the promised land. So you're going to take people into a place they've never been before. You're going to take, and we learned last week with Caleb that a whole generation of slavery thinking had to actually leave. So these were young guys. These were guys that hadn't seen all of God's promises fulfilled in Egypt. They haven't seen all of that. And so you actually begin to see that he was taking people from the desert into a place of promise. And that's something that's really powerful and really interesting to think about is he was going where no one had been before. But one you know, we've talked about the promised land and we've talked about this, the promises of God that were given to the Israelites. Where did that begin? How did that start? So it went all the way back to Genesis 12 and 15. So put that in your Bible, write it down. Uh, we're not going to jump into it big time. So Brandy's turning into it, but I'm about to move on from it. But it's the call of Abraham. So there's this guy named Abraham. And one day God comes to him and says, hey, I want to use you to make your people a great nation. Uh, from you, there's going to be an incredible nation, Abraham. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through you and through your offspring. So you're going to have an incredible nation. And you look in Genesis 15, God actually cuts a covenant with Abraham. But what it actually ends up happening at that moment also is he, he promises that the nation's going to have a land. It's going to have a physical location. For him. And so what we actually see in Joshua 1 is the fulfillment of the promise God gave Abraham. For me, that's encouraging because it shows that God is faithful always to keep his promises. God's faithful to push through the promises. Now, here's Joshua in this situation. 
No one has ever gone this way before. No one's really taken the inheritance before. And that's where Joshua had to have been absolutely terrified. We can't, we don't see that. It doesn't say it in the Bible. But if you actually read the story, all of a sudden, God is telling him over and over again, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and, you see it in verse 6, in verse 7, in verse 9. So he's telling him, be strong, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. So before he ever had to address the people, before he ever, can you imagine that moment? He was probably just sitting back in the corner of the green room or wherever he was before he went out and to address the people. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm the guy. I'm leading people to where they've never been before. I'm leading people into the promises that were given all the way back to Abraham. We're about to see the promises fulfilled in our lives. Generation after generation of our people have been waiting for this promise. And so here he is in that moment, and God comforts him and says, be strong and courageous. You see, if we want to have an upgrade in our life, if we want to see an upgrade happen, the first thing we have to, we have to be strong and we have to be courageous. You know, these are courageous times. You know, this past week, I, f- I felt probably for the first time discouragement like I haven't felt before. And just, and it wasn't about a particular situation. It was just, I was tired. It's like, God, what are you doing? Where are you going? And so Tuesday and Wednesday, I actually took some time just to remove stuff from my brain, just to reimagine and re-push back in that, you know what? God is faithful. He is good. And his promises are always, always going to be fulfilled. And so we see Joshua in that. But there's this other promise, and this is what I love. There's this other promise that you see God give Abraham. It says, through you, Abraham, we're going to be a blessing to all the nations. Through you. That's that's an incredible, that all, the, the way it actually says, all the families of the earth will be blessed. You know, I think as this Easter, people are going to be gathered in their family units, in families, whatever. Two meters apart. Two meters apart, yeah. Everyone's going to be sitting in separate (laughs) corners of your living room or whatever as we we gather. But all the families of the earth are going to be blessed through Abraham. You know, there's a lot of blessing that you see that the people of God have done over the years. And there's a lot of blessing that actually we are part of that promise that we can be a blessing to the nations as, as adopted kids of Abraham. But it all comes down to Jesus. I mean, the whole Bible, it all centers in the greatest breakthrough, the greatest upgrade, if you will, is whenever Jesus comes onto the scene because he wipes out the old operating system and he brings something completely new, completely, completely different that we hadn't seen before since Adam. And so let's, let's turn, to, and you can actually see in your Bibles in Mark 14 and 15. So take the notes. You can look at it again further and, more, and in more detail. But this is an incredible story, and it's the story of the Lord's Supper. So if, if we were to say that this was the beginning of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, this would be the start. Tonight would be the start where we are. So they probably start at 704. I'm quite convinced that's probably when... They started their, uh, their Passover meal as well. So this was the Passover meal. So it goes back to whenever the people of God were coming out of, coming out of Egypt, that actually there was 10 plagues that came upon the people. And the last one that came upon the Egyptians was that the angel of God came through and actually killed the firstborn. And it was a horrible, horrible time. But for God to pass over you, you what you had to do is you had to kill a lamb. And then you had to... Wipe the blood of the lamb over your house. And then the angel of death would actually pass over. And so that became known as Passover. And so so during this time, each each year you would commemorate this as a as a Jewish uh, in the Jewish family, and still to this day you commemorate it. And that you would have this Passover meal together. And so that's what Jesus and his disciples were doing. And in that, there's actually there's four cups in the Passover meal. Tonight we're just gonna have one cup, but there was four cups different cups that that they would go through through the mill they would they would start the mill and then they would they would have a couple of the cups so, so the first cup is the cup of sanctification or it's it's actually it's actually a beautiful picture of what Jesus did 
with us is the cup of sanctification that that he is now what God sees. It's an incredible, beautiful picture that he has wiped us clean. It's the cup of deliverance that he set us free. That was the second cup that he has set us free. You know, for in the Jewish mind and, and in that season, you know, they would think about whenever the Israelites were set free from Egypt, that was the cup that they were remembering. And then they were seeing songs and then there was this next cup that would start the meal. And it was, the, it was actually, it was the cup of redemption that God is redeeming us and restoring us to, to our place and relationship with him. And that's a beautiful picture that we have. And you know, I'm not an incredible scholar. I have a lot of friends that walk through the Passover. But what's interesting is there's a fourth cup. It's the cup of praise. And that was to acknowledge that my, that God has taken us as his people. And that's a powerful picture. But what's interesting is, is if you read the story in Mark 4, and if you look at this story, then what actually, or Mark 14, not 4, Mark 14, excuse me, you actually begin to see it begins in, uh, it begins actually in verse 22. Is actually, he, he takes it and he gives the cup to his disciples. And then he, he, gives, he gives some bread to his disciples his disciples to take it. He says, take, eat, this is my body. And he says, take and drink of this. And then he makes this statement. It's really fascinating. I was doing some study this morning and I hadn't seen this before. He says, I will not drink of this cup again. I will not drink of this cup until the kingdom, until I am walking in the kingdom and until the fullness of the kingdom has begun to come. And so it's actually, it's an interesting picture because it says immediately after that, they start singing a song. They started singing this song. And actually, the last cup, the cup of praise, you actually would take after the song. But what's interesting is they don't take a cup. They immediately go to the garden. They immediately go to the garden of Gethsemane. They immediately start the the journey. And from that point, you see the Roman soldiers come and you begin, and you see the ascension to the cross that begins with Jesus. And during that time, And then what's really interesting is you see Jesus on the cross. Here he is. He's about to die for our sins. He's about to take the weight. He's about to fulfill the promise God made to Abraham that through him, all the nations will be blessed. He's about to fulfill that moment that there's actually, he asked for a drink. Isn't that interesting? He asked for a drink and he's given the fourth cup. And he makes this phrase, it is finished. He takes the last cup of wine. He, has, he takes the last drink of wine, if you will. It was wine that was mixed to help actually dull the pain. So he takes it and he says, that it is finished. What is the picture that's happening in that moment? What's, it's an incredible story. It's an incredible picture. And it's really beautiful once you begin to think about it. Is that he was saying, I am the sacrificial lamb. And because of me, I'm finishing this once and for all because of what I'm doing, because of me sacrificing myself, because of what this moment happens, that God's gonna eternally pass over people that say yes to me. It's a beautiful picture. And so tonight for me, that's what I love, is that it's a picture, it's the beginning of the Lamb of God taking away the sins of the world. It's the picture of the greatest upgrade in the history of life that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, our old operating system, our old way of thinking, it completely be washed away, it completely be changed, and that there's a new way of living, there's a new way that we can break the cycle. It's a beautiful picture that our identity is changed and transformed. And that's, a, that's, what, that's what, to me, that's the picture that Easter is all about. You know, is that the Lamb of God came. Now, we know that he didn't stay dead. He was only he was only there for three days. And actually, I'm excited because on Saturday, we're going to talk about that in-between time during our coffee time at 11 a.m. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But let's just stay here for a moment and just think about this picture. That for God to do what he did, he had to give his all. For Jesus to become the blessing to all the nations, he had to give everything. He had to give himself. You know, and that's what's interesting about following Jesus and what's interesting about life with Jesus is that whenever you're with him, 
that he actually asks the same from you. You know, there's this beautiful, there's this beautiful scripture in Mark 8. It's verse 35. It's this incredible, incredible picture. And it's the, it's the question that we have. It's always the challenge that we have of how do we, how do we, I have this, I like to win. So Brandy does, usually doesn't like playing games with me because I usually win. So I like to win. What? She's just laughing now. So I put her on the spot. So, but it's, uh, you know, I want to know how, how do we win at life? What's the ultimate win? And actually Jesus makes a statement in Mark 8, 35. Can, here, can you read it for us? Yeah, it says, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. So it's actually an interesting picture that he's, and is actually a foreshadowing of what Jesus did. Jesus gave his life so that all can be saved. So what he asks of us is to give everything and that we'll actually discover life that we never imagined. You know, whenever you switched from the Droid X or Droid A or whatever, that phone is not being used anymore. What's interesting is, is that you had to give the whole thing up to get a completely new operating system. It was, you had to give everything. And you know, sometimes I feel like in today's world, we miss that picture that if we completely surrender our life, if we completely give everything to him, that's when we're gonna discover him the most. You know, that's this past week, that's what I was reminded of. It doesn't matter how hard we work. It doesn't matter about our performance record. It doesn't matter about any of those things. But if we just truly say, God, I am yours completely. And that's when we're going to discover life that we could never have imagined. That's whenever the greatest upgrade in our life, I believe, is going to happen. And that's what Joshua did in that moment. You know, why, would, why did God keep asking him to be or challenging him to be strong and courageous? It's because he knew it was going to require everything inside of him to lead the people into the promised land. You know, why did Jesus come as a sacrificial lamb? It required everything. So he asked the same for us. And it's a great joy and it's a great honor. And I want to ask you tonight, if you haven't said yes to Jesus, if you haven't surrendered your life fully, now is a great time to do that. There's actually a way here in a second, I think there's going to be a, just a little way to raise your hand digitally on the screen. And it's going to pop up. And that's going to be a way for you to say, hey, I want to say yes. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Then from there, we can actually get in touch with you later, either this evening or tomorrow. But this is my encouragement. You know, Jesus came and he died. He surrendered his life for us. And the greatest life, the greatest joy we can have is whenever we surrender ours to his. You know, if you've been a follower with Jesus, tonight what we're going to do is we're actually going to take communion together. So I want you to grab what you have. I want you to grab the, uh, your cup or your, you know, we have a cracker symbolizing the bread. And then we also have our grape juice. So I think it's kosher actually. So it's, it's extra blessed. But we're going to take communion as a reminder and as, as almost a, a rechecking of our hearts. You know, the past month has just been crazy. You know, I was, I was thinking back and, this time last month, we were celebrating today actually with Pastor Zibby and I and, Mag, and Pastor Magda and uh, some of our other friends that are actually very close with us and have a huge heart for Israel. We were having coffee in the square. So this time last, last month and everything was normal. The coronavirus had just kind of started doing things in Italy, but it was mainly just a Chinese Asia situation. And over the past month, there's been chaos. You know, we've been talking about fighting fear. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about all those things. But I think now's a chance for us to re-surrender our lives and to just recommit to him and say, God, we're yours. Whatever that looks like, we're yours. What All that we are, we're yours. Our jobs, whatever those may, be, look, may look like, our, our families, our, we're yours. And that's, 
to me, there's some power in the communion because it's not just, it's not just a picture of what Jesus did, but it's a present reminder of what he's doing today. It's not just about what happened 2,000 years ago. It's a picture now of that he's still active, he's still alive. And oftentimes I take communion, it reminds me of God. We don't have to remind God of who he is or what he did. He's well aware of that. We don't have to remind God of what he's doing. He's well aware of that on earth. Sometimes I have to remind myself, God, I'm a part of what you're doing. And so tonight, let's do that. Let's take, let's take the bread together. Here you go. So grab your, grab your bread, and then I'm going to pray. So Father, Lord, we thank you, Father God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what he did. We thank you for him dying on the cross. But Lord, we thank you that death couldn't hold him, that he rose again, that he defeated death once and for all, that he could say with full confidence, all authority has been given to him. God, we thank you that he is the eternal sacrificial lamb and that his blood has covered our sins and that our only response should be complete surrender to him. So Lord, tonight we just resurrender our lives and we take this bread reminding us of your promises and reminding us of what our lives mean to you and reminding us that you're still active today, reminding us that there's so much you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's take the cup. God, we just thank you, Father, for what you, for giving your son. You know, I, I'm, I'm often amazed at, at what that relationship had to have looked like. And Jesus, we thank you that your blood was spilled so that the sacrifice was made for our sin. And Lord, we just, we just celebrate you. You know, we, we celebrate as the fourth cup, if you will, that, that you have taken us as your people. So Lord, we drink this in remembrance of what you've done, but we also, we drink this reminding ourselves of what you're doing presently, that you're still very active in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the cup together. So as we end our time, this past week we were able to uh, get a couple of our, our worship team in here and actually uh, film, film, a, film a song. It's, it's been a song that's been very popular on YouTube. And so we just filmed a cover for that. And it just, it, it reminds me of the promises of God. And it, it's the ironic blessing. It's that the Lord bless you and keep you. That he make his face shine upon you. They lift up the light of his countenance or the light of his, his like face, not just, you know, like countenance, like the direction and gaze, you know, upon you and give you peace. So it's, an, it's incredible. It's a beautiful picture and song. So I just encourage you, there'll be words on the screen as well. Let's worship together and celebrating who God is, and let's let's start this Easter weekend off right. Let's start this Easter weekend off celebrating God for what He's done and reminding ourselves of who He is. So let's worship together. Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. Space. 
face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Mm -hmm. I
I just love that song and just the the power in that moment of you know just being reminded that he is for us you know and that's that's really a beautiful picture so hey do you want to say hello to a couple of people yeah it looks like we have a whole huddle of like Texans joining us so we want to say hello to our Texas friends or howdy y'all uh, looks like Eddie is joining us and Don and Randy I think Michael and Melissa so thanks for Y'all joining us, and we have Lindsay from England, so that's exciting. And right. So, no, I'm just and our, I'm agreeing. our Polish crew, we have Nastia and Andre and Monica. So thank you all for joining us. And we forgot to introduce our little friend that we brought tonight. So this is Fluffy. <laughs> And he decided to join us for Easter today. He just hopped right in, no pun intended. Yeah, that sounds like that was a serious pun that was actually intended. So, hey, we just want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we're really, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating God doing something incredible through the rest of this awkward season, but that there's not going to be a new normal or there's not going to be an old normal that's going to return. It's going to be new. It's going to be fresh. And for me, you know, Easter is a great reminder that we have an incredible rock to stand on in Jesus and because of what he's already done, it's it's just, it's a beautiful reminder that no matter the chaos, you know, that doesn't, that didn't freak him out. No matter the concerns we have, no matter the questions we have, we don't really have to, uh, we don't have to worry because, because he's going to do what he said he's going to do. You know, all the way back from Abraham to the promises, you see Joshua help fulfill those, you see Jesus help fulfill those. And so it's just, it's just encouraging. So, hey, before we go, we just want to encourage you, um, if you're a part of KDM and you consider KDM English your home, to we encourage you to give. So there will be a little button pop up or you can look in the top right of your screen if you're on your computer or it will be in the menu section of, of just a way to give. You know, that's that's one of the things that, that Brandy and I, we've actually started. We've actually, during this season, we've actually increased uh, our giving a little bit just because we want to sow in faith during this season of what God's doing because, because there's, no, there's no greater way to take your earthly resources and give them and sow them into etern, eternal promises and eternal resources and to, just to see what God is going to do with that. So we just want to encourage you, if this is your home, if this is where, where you worship, whether that's right now that's in your, uh, hopefully not your pajamas, but in your nice clothes in your living room or wherever you're, you're watching us from, if this is your your family, then I just encourage you to to give and give generously during this season. Uh, so, Brandy, would you like to close us out? Is there any other things we need to know about? Yeah. So we want to take a minute and thank Ujel. He's playing the piano for us tonight live, and Adrian for being our producer tonight. Um, but we want you to join us on Saturday. Um, this Saturday at 11 o'clock our time is going to be Saturday coffee. And like Josiah said, we're going to kind of continue with what he's been discussing tonight. But we would love for you to join us on Saturday at 11. So and that'll be on Facebook Live. So you can find us there. You can find our English, uh, KDM English page, KDM English KRK. So, hey, just have an incredible weekend. Celebrate Jesus. Connect with people as best you can. And let's, uh, let's just remember what God's doing, but also remember that he's present and he's doing something now. So it's not, a, it's, not, it's not just something we can look back at, but it's something that God's doing right now. So, hey, can you close us out in prayer? Yeah. Father, we just want to thank you so much for this time. Father, we um, just thank you for your presence, um, that you can be in many places at once and that you um, are with each and every person that is watching this live or that watches this later, Father. And we just thank you um, that you are an intimate Father. Father, we thank you that you are victorious, Father. We just celebrate, especially just during this time. Um, <clears throat> we just thank you for your son and what he did, Father. But we thank you that he is alive, that he is working inside of us, that you're constantly doing things here and now, Father. And so I just pray that we would just have an increased awareness of what you're doing around us and what you're doing inside of us. And just as Josiah said, that 
we um, would just re-surrender um, our lives today and this week, that, that we would just lay down our lives again and that we just ask for something fresh from you, Father. We thank you that you are a God of new things and not just a God of old things. And so we just praise you, we thank you, we bless your name today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you Saturday at 11 o'clock if you're this on this side of the ocean. If you're on the North American side of the ocean, then we'll see you. That means you have to get up at 4 a.m., which I believe it will be totally worth it on a Saturday to get up at 4 a.m. to join us. Facebook Live, 11 o'clock. We'll see you then. And then, as always, we'll be back here next week. And we'll be starting a new series, which I'm excited about. So, love you guys. Praying for you. See you next week.